Welcome to another Be Hooked tutorial. My name is Brittany and today I'm going to teach you how to tackle the Karen Adult Knit V-neck cardigan. This is a free pattern that's available from Yarnspirations.com. Well, in this tutorial, I'll blend a mix of knitting techniques and pattern reading concepts to help you turn this beauty into a finished project. Let's begin with the basics first. Now the first thing we need to do before we can even pick up our needles, I know it's tempting to do, but we need to determine the size that we're going to make. So the size is the number one most important thing that you're going to do right now. All right, so we're looking here at page number one of the pattern and the folks at Your Inspirations, they did all the hard work for us. We don't have to do anything beyond measuring and using our best judgment to figure this out. So the first thing we want to do is pay attention to this section right here. That is the actual measurement of the chest. So that's what you need to do. Use a tape measure and measure your chest and compare that to the numbers that you see here within this little section. Once you figure out what that number is, the next thing we're going to do is look down here. Now, I took it one step further. I grabbed a cardigan, a sweater, out of my closet and I laid it flat and I measured it from this point here to this point here. So I took that measurement and then I multiplied it by two. That's going to be the circumference, if you will. That's going to equal the numbers that we see in this section here. So just for example, I was looking at a sweater that measured 16 inches from one side to the next, and I multiplied that by two. Well, with that information, I was able to determine that the extra small or the small size is right for me. All right, so the first thing you need to do to get started is take your measurements. Once you have that measurement, then you can use that number to compare your measurement to the finished measurements that are given in your pattern and use that to make your best judgment as to which size you need to create. Now, the next most important thing we need to cover before we even pick up our needles is to talk about gauge. Gauge is the one thing that you have in your corner. It's your checkpoint to make sure that your finished sweater is the size that's listed here on our pattern. If your gauge is off, then the sizing of your cardigan is also going to be off and you run the risk of doing all the work and it doesn't fit. So we're going to focus in right here where the pattern gives us the instructions for a gauge swatch. And the instructions are right there. So we are going to use the larger of the two recommended needles. And then we're going to use 18 stitches and 24 rows as our guideline. Well, there are two scenarios to consider when you're measuring your gauge. And if you don't understand these concepts, then you're not going to be able to apply them to this pattern and future patterns. So let's have a look at, at those two scenarios. Well, one situation is where your gauge is smaller than what's given in your pattern. And in that case, when your gauge is smaller, that means you have more stitches and more rows. So you would have any number more than 18 or more than 24 if your gauge was smaller. Now when your gauge is smaller, what you need to do is go up in your needle size. All right, scenario number two. This is when your gauge is larger than what's given in your pattern. So that means there are less stitches and less rows. So what you would do in that situation is you would go down in your needle size. So if you had fewer than 18 stitches or fewer than 24 rows in your four inch measurement, then that is going to be a situation where you need to go down in needle size. And I recommend just doing it one needle size at a time. That will usually get the job done so the next thing I need for you to do is knit up a gauge swatch and 
you'll want to do it in stocking stitch or stockinette stitch because that's what's given here in the pattern. And I do have a resource on how to knit the stockinette stitch and you can find that at behookedcrochet.com slash stockinette. Once you have a look at that tutorial or if you know how to do the stockinette stitch, just go ahead and cast on, or let's say 25 stitches and then you'll knit that for let's say 34 rows. And once you do that, just take a measurement and make sure it matches your gauge. If it does, then you're good to go. You can move on to the next step. If it doesn't, then have a look at what we just talked about here. Figure out if you need to go up or down in your needle size and knit another gauge swatch and just keep doing that until your gauge is right. Now that you know the size you're gonna create and you understand the importance of gauge and you're not skipping that critical step, there's just one tiny little detail I wanna to bring to your attention before we start casting on. Well, this pattern is available in male and female versions, and it's not completely evident here just looking at the first page. So I just wanna quickly show you page number two where you're going to see it first appear. So first paragraph here, her version, his version, basically the difference between the her version and the his version throughout this pattern is a difference in length. So just keep that in the back of your mind, grab your needles and let's cast on. We're gonna use the long tail cast on for all of the panels of our sweater. And to do that, you need to get a nice long tail, but there is somewhat of an educated approach to this. What I like to do instead of just grabbing a whole bunch of yarn is taking the needle that I'm going to use and then we're just simply going to, let's get this in the right hand here, we're just gonna wrap it around and count your wraps. I like to use a nice even number, so I usually aim for 10 or 20. So that's three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10. So about right here is the amount of yarn we need for 10 stitches. So I'm just gonna use that and fold it. So that'll be 20 and 30. So just do that for the amount of stitches you're gonna cast on. And then leave yourself a little bit of slack. It's always better to have too much yarn than too little in terms of the long tail cast on. Now what we're going to do is just place that over our needle. We could work a slip knot, honestly we don't have to. I have my tail end here, my ball of yarn coming from back there. And I'm gonna pinch my two fingers together and put them in between those two strands before gathering it up at the bottom. Hold on to it here at the top and you're just gonna pull it down, catch the strand on your thumb, swing it around, catch the strand on your finger, and then release your thumb over the tip of the needle. And then you'll tighten it up at the end. Now just work that again And each one of these loops on your needle is going to count as a stitch. And you're just gonna use your pattern to reference how many stitches you're gonna cast on. So here I'm casting on for the back, the back panel. This is gonna be the technique you use for any panel though. Now once we've cast on the total number of stitches as indicated in the pattern, we're ready to move on to the ribbing. That's how most, well that's how all of the panels are gonna be worked in this pattern. We have five panels, the back, two fronts, and two sleeves. And we're gonna cast on a number of stitches for all of those panels, work in a ribbing pattern, and then continue in a stockinette pattern with some shaping along the way. So the techniques we're going to cover here are the knit and the purl because we're gonna be using these two stitches primarily for the ribbing. Now, the panel that you're working on is really going to depend how you start and end the row but the techniques of the knit and the purl are the same. So the first thing we want to do is make sure our stitches are right up close to the tip of the needle so they're easier to work. And then you'll insert your needle knitwise, so from front to back, to set yourself up to knit. Now just move your tail out of the way there and then wrap the working yarn around the tip of the needle to knit the first stitch. 
Now we're going to knit two and purl two. That's going to create the ribbing pattern. So we'll knit the next stitch, working that the same way. Next we need to purl. So to do the purl, we have to move the working yarn to the front. So you'll just work it underneath the tip of your needle and insert your needle now from back to front. So directly opposite. Wrap the working yarn and then purl it off. And we're going to purl two. So that was our first one. Purl the next one. And that is the ribbing repeat. So again, don't confuse that with the start in the beginning. I'm working on the back section. So my first row says to start with two knits followed by two purls, and that's the repeat for the row. But as you progress and move on to other panels, just make sure that you're paying attention to the written instructions so you know exactly what to do. Now just to see that a few more times, I have to knit now. So you saw I pulled the working yarn again to the back. Remember, when you're knitting, the working yarn goes to the back. When you're purling, it has to come to the front. So we'll knit two, followed by purl two. So bring that yarn forward and purl two. Now the last little bit I want to point out is how to see your knits and your purls because if you get distracted and you need to put this down, then you're going to have to know where to pick up, right? You need to know the last stitch you worked. So looking at your work, I know that I started with two knits because I, I just worked those a few moments ago. So I know the first two are knits. I know the next two are purls. So look at the difference between those two. You see the two purls, they have this little bar or this line of yarn that goes directly underneath the needle. And we don't see that for the knits. So if we were to progress a little bit more, have a few more rows, we would see that knits kind of look a little bit more like V's and the purls have these bars or these purl bumps. So that's how you can tell the difference from one stitch to the next. And that is the first row repeat for the back. We're going to knit two and purl two. Once you get finished with your first row of ribbing, you're going to follow the second row's instructions as you see it in your pattern. But basically, the concepts are the same again. So when we're doing a knit two, purl two rib, we want to make sure that we're always knitting the knits and purling the purls. So when you flip your work over, you can kind of see those little pearl bumps here and there. Well, you just want to keep that in mind as you're working. So you can follow along with the pattern, but you're also given visual cues by reading your work. So I'm going to purl the next two stitches. And to do that, I just want to make sure the working yarn is in front. So I just work my needle behind it and insert from back to front and purl the first stitch. Now that next stitch, you see that bar across there. So that means I need to purl that too. Or following along with the instructions for this panel, it says to purl two at the beginning. And then I'll knit. So just move the work to the back and knit two, followed by two purls. So the moral of the story here is, well, first to understand the knit two, purl two ribbing and how that looks. So we're always knitting the knits and purling the purls. And then to just follow along with your pattern, trust what it says, and work the knit and the purl as the pattern tells you for all the ribbing for this entire cardigan. You'll get a lot of good practice working through your ribbing for each of your panels. The next thing we want to talk about are the instances where your pattern asks you to increase right after you're finished with your ribbing. So let's have a look at how to do that. In those instances where you need to increase evenly for your last row, what you're going to do is, well, you could count them out and you can space them exactly even, but honestly, you don't have to. Just be 
relatively consistent from one side to the next. So I went ahead and I knit the first four stitches here and I'm gonna go ahead and increase next. So I want to make sure my working yarn is at the back and then I'm gonna find the bar that's right in between the two stitches. So I can see that bar right here. Now I wanna take my needle, pick up that bar and lay it over that needle. Now from here, I'm going to insert my needle into the just the back part of that stitch and knit it. This is a make one increase and it's relatively invisible. So that's why I'm choosing this method. You could do a yarn over method, but then you're actually gonna have a little hole and we don't want that either. So do your make one stitch and then I'm gonna continue with my pattern until I get to the next point where I want to increase. Now for the back section, our pattern says that we need to increase a certain number of stitches evenly. So you're just gonna take that into account and space them evenly. Once your ribbing measures the proper length as indicated by your pattern, and just keep in mind, I'm actually working on a mini version of the cardigan for the tutorial. So once your ribbing measures that particular length, you've done your increases if the pattern told you to do so, then we're going to change to the larger needle size. We're gonna do this for all of the bands on all of our panels for the cardigan. So we start with the smaller size for the band, we jump up to the larger size. Now, if your gauge matched and you're switching to the size that's exact, exactly indicated in the pattern, that's great. If not, no big deal, just switch to the needle size that you worked in your gauge and then we'll be ready to go. So how do you transition from one needle to the next? Well, it's a lot simpler than you might think. So the first thing you want to do is hold your band in your non-dominant hand and hold the new needle in your dominant hand. And we're gonna work the same stitch to work this first row. Now, whether you're working all knits or all pearls, is gonna be determined by whether you're working on the right side or the wrong side. Now, if you followed your pattern correctly, you should be looking at the right side of your work. And in that case, we're going to knit all stitches. So all you need to do to transition from one needle size to the next is just simply knit or purl, if, if that is the case for you, you're going to work all of your stitches just from one needle to the next. Now you notice here that I'm working with circular needles and that really is a personal preference for me. I like working with circulars better than straights because they're a lot lighter, there's less to hold on to, and overall I just find them easier to work with. So I have my smaller pair in my non-dominant hand and you can see back here, the needle that I would normally knit with if I were keeping it on this set is down here at the bottom and I'm just using the new needle to knit with. Now, once you've made that transition from the smaller needle to the larger needle, all of the patterns, all of the panels that we're gonna work for this pattern are gonna require that we work in stocking stitch or stockinette stitch, it's also referred to, for some length of time. So let's talk about how to do the stocking stitch or the stockinette. Now the stocking stitch or the stockinette stitch requires that we work one full row of knits followed by one full row of purls and then we repeat. So knit a row, purl a row, knit a row, purl a row. And if you recall, we knitted all of the stitches to get the work onto these larger needle sizes. If for some reason you had to purl that entire row, then you're gonna follow up with knitting this next row. But for most of us here, we're going to be working on a purl row. To begin that, of course, we have to have the, the working yarn coming out the front. So I'm just gonna put my needle behind it to set myself up for my first purl. Now you're already really familiar with working the purl stitch, so there's really no new techniques here. The main thing I want to stress is the pattern and how it's worked. So always remember, for the stockinette stitch, we're going to knit a row, followed by a purl row, and a knit row, and a purl row, 
And we're just going to follow that repeat until our pattern tells us otherwise. So here we are in the pattern up to this point. So we, we've caught up here. We know that we need to continue in stocking stitch until our work from the beginning, our cast on edge, measures a certain length. Now you do want to pick out the size that you're making and use that to guide you in order to know how long to keep knitting. And that's what numbers you see here. If you're looking at a color version like this, you'll notice they're color coded based on the size. But if you're working with a black and white version, if you've just printed on a black and white printer, then it's a really good idea to go ahead and highlight the numbers that correspond to the size you're making. That way you don't make any mistakes. You don't have to worry about it. The other thing I want to bring to your attention is that you are given two different lengths. We talked about it briefly a little while ago, but there are two versions to this pattern. There's a male version and there's a female version. And if you're working this cardigan for a male, you want to use the longer or the his version as you see on the next page. Now we see here on the second page, we get the information for the her version and the his version. Just keep in mind that the her version lengths are on the first page. These numbers right here are for the his version. So you just want to make sure that you're reading all of your repeats. The other thing you want to keep in mind is what it says here at the very end, ending on a purl row. So that means you're going to knit and stock a net stitch until your work measures the, the target length that you're going for. And you want to make sure that the last row you complete before you move on to the next step is a purl row. While this information is fresh in your mind, just take a few seconds to flip through the pages of your pattern and point out all of your repeats. So we're looking here at page two. We have a repeated section there. We have one here. Let's see, there's one right here and from here. I mean, this pattern is full of repeats. My best tip for you is to make sure you read all of the repeats. That's going to make sure that you don't miss anything. Definitely don't assume that you know what the pattern is going to tell you to do. I find myself doing that all the time. I feel like I have the pattern down pat. I feel like I don't really need the instruction. And so oftentimes I'll kind of skim through it and just sort of do my own thing. Well, that doesn't always get you to the right solution. That often ends in frogging or tinking and nobody likes to do that. So just take the, take the time to read the instructions and make sure you're doing exactly as it says and work segments at a time. So when you get to this step right here, only focus on this repeat. And then once you get down here, then only focus on this repeat. Don't try to remember what you did on the previous repeat because it's, it's often going to be different. So my best tip, read the repeats, make sure you pay attention and follow them step by step. Well, after you've worked up any of your panels, doesn't matter which one you're working on. Again, here I have the back portion. Well, doesn't matter. You're going to run into the instruction to cast off stitches at the beginning of the row. This happens on both knit and purl rows. So what I want to cover is how to cast off on the knit version or when you're on the knit side and when you flip it over and you're on the purl side to cast off those two stitches. But keep in mind that the technique for the cast off that we're going to cover first for the knit is what you're going to use for the cast off when you're completely finished with the panel that you're working on. In some cases, you might be casting off more stitches than others, but just know that the technique is the same. To cast off stitches on a knit row, the first thing you need to do is knit two stitches. Then we're going to take that first stitch and pass it over that second stitch. And with that, we've cast off one stitch. So in a lot of cases, our instructions say to cast off two stitches. So what we would do to cast off that second stitch is just knit the next one. Then we have the two loops on our needle and then pass that first one over the second one. Now, if you need to cast off on a purl side, the concept is the same. We're gonna purl the first two stitches. And 
and then pass the first one over the second one. So I just like to take my working yarn to the back just to get it out of the way. And I'm going to pass the first stitch over that second one, then pull the yarn in front again. So we have one stitch cast off there. And so to do that second one, we'll purl the next stitch. Again, I'm just gonna pull that out of the way, then pass the first stitch over the second stitch. So just keep in mind when you are casting off, just keep it in pattern. The, the concept of casting off really is just working two stitches at a time and then passing the first stitch over the second stitch. It doesn't matter if you're working with knits or purls, if the pattern tells you just to cast off two at the beginning of the row, or if the pattern tells you to cast off because you're finished with that panel. Techniques are exactly the same. Now that we finished that large repeat, we're going to pick up right here where we get to learn how to shape the raglans. It sounds a lot more confusing probably than it actually is. A raglan is just a type of sweater and you'll see that in looking at the picture, you'll see those defined lines that are kind of in between the chest and the, the sleeve. Those are, that's just characteristic to a raglan sweater. So we're shaping the raglans next. There are a couple of new techniques that we'll introduce that we will have a look at next. But before we do, I want to just bring to your attention how these raglan shapings come about in the pattern. So it's always indicated like this, where we see shape raglans followed by the instruction. The main thing I want to point out is that they are broken down into sections. So you'll see here, this is for sizes two to three XL and four to five XL only. That's a very important word. Sizes medium, large, extra large, two to three X, four to five X only. So that covers all of those sizes. And then we see all sizes. Now what you need to do is figure out what size you're making and circle that. I briefly mentioned before that I'm gonna be working on the extra small to the small size. And it seems a little bit confusing, honestly, because I didn't read off that size, right? So what do you do for the, the size extra small and the small? Well, I'm going to just follow the instructions exactly. I'm not gonna to try to assume anything. So I'm keeping track of my color number. So I know that that is the number of stitches I'm going to cast off for the extra small because it's given in this like red color. Well, I'm going to skip the section right here for 2X and 3XL, 4 to 5, because I'm not doing that. So I'm just gonna completely skip that section. Now I look at the next section. This is for medium, large, XL, 2, 2 to 3XL. I'm not making any of those sizes, so I'm gonna skip that one too. Now, all sizes, that's what I wanna focus on. So this is going to be my first row after I've done that cast off of two stitches. Just know that the raglan shaping is going to happen for all of the panels of our cardigan. We're gonna do it for the left front, the right front, and both of the sleeves. So you want to get comfortable with how the pattern is worded. And just, I mean, if you have to go back and listen to what we just covered, that's the basis for reading the raglan shaping for all of the panels that we're gonna cover in this pattern. And you're gonna see it over and over, but it is broken down in the same way. So different sections based on the pattern. So we just look really quickly right here. We have the shape raglan again. Well, this is for the left front, uh, the left front panel. So shaping the raglans, we can see there's a paragraph right here for this extra small and this small only. And then we have another paragraph for medium, large XL, then medium and large. I mean, it goes on. It's broken into like seven different sections. And I don't want that to confuse you because it makes it look a lot more confusing than it actually is. Just do the steps that we just covered, cross off the parts of the pattern that mean absolutely nothing to you and just focus in on what you need. As you're following along with the repeated section for the raglan shapings, we're still still talking about that topic right now. Well, there is something that you're going to see in the pattern that I wanted to point out. And I'm looking at this row right here, the third row for these sizes. The instructions say as first row. Well, I don't want to assume that anybody knows exactly what that means because I mean, well, let's be honest. We see first row a ton of times throughout this page. 
So which first row do we focus in on? Well, if even if you have to do this with a pen like I am here, circle that section you're working on. So the first row here refers to this first row. So you're gonna work the first row following here and we're gonna look at these techniques next because that's a new one, this is a new one. There's several new techniques that we're going to cover here with this raglan shaping. But first, just know first row, second row, you'll work those two up. You're gonna see the third row and it's gonna say as first row. Well, then you're just gonna take your attention back to the first row and you're gonna knit two, slip, slip, knit, knit to the last four stitches, knit two together, knit two. Don't get confused by that, just read it as it is. And next, we're gonna look at those new techniques, starting with the slip, slip, knit. 